welcome to the Livecast Conversations with. On this show, my guests and I explore the bumps and triumphs of their journey to extract the gems from their experiences because success leaves clues. And today we turn those clues into billboards for you. I'm your host, Gene Bernier, founder of Peeled Back, speaker and co-active coach guiding leaders to ruthlessly pursue a life worth living. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 112 of Conversations With. Today, in this episode, we welcome John Maybury, a third-generation New Zealand radio broadcaster turned presentation coach sorry, who has overcome a childhood stutter to excel in the world of radio and event production with a history of working with renowned brands like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, LG, and Sony. John has honed his skills in audience engagement and storytelling. Join us as we explore John's inspiring journey and discover how he now helps SMEs, business owners, captivate their audience through events, speaking engagements, and video content. Definitely do not miss this chance to learn more from the master. John, thank you so much for being on the show, and my words can definitely not do you justice, sir. Gene, it is an absolute pleasure. Thank you for, for, for coming into New Zealand, to little old, a little old Aotearoa at the bottom of the world, to share some wisdom well it, it's it's my pleasure i've always wanted to be here <laughs> you are here you're here with me we're holding hands on oh, that side we let we just hold hands there i, I we always are. do this wrong there we are yeah, there we are there we are <laughs> very good good to good to, good to be on the show yes great to be on the show and uh I, I, you know before we get going i want to give a shout out to our friend tom broxham because without him our paths would not have have cr crossed so i know that we've attended a few of his events in the past and have followed one another on linkedin because of those uh those opportunities so just a big tom thanks is out. a tom is the the quintessential kiwi man turned networker with some bumps in the road just as oh, you've yeah. so so beautifully described and shares those bumps in the road so people can relate and Really, we don't need to say any more because the Tom Broxham case study is it. You know, that's yeah, that's that's life. Is you you start somewhere and you want to go from A to B, and unfortunately, there's a squiggly line in the middle, and uh, hopefully, you get to B. You might get to C. <laughs> You're going to find all the and the D's and everything along the way. So let's talk about your squiggly line and where that's taken you. You know, it, it's interesting hearing. Uh, going through your profile and hearing that at one point you had a stutter and to seeing where you are now and how you present yourself and everything else and tell us a little bit about going on that journey because in itself was uh, obviously quite a few little bumps and some opportunities on your squiggle would you like me to share my story i would love to let's start there okay cool so look you know when i was a youngster growing up uh in on on auckland's north shore and i was surrounded by really interesting people with really cool stories to tell. And, and they were, they were MCs and actors and radio announcers and jugglers and uh, show people that just wanted to love life and have fun. And as a six year old, that sounded pretty bloody good. <laughs> and I, I it was then I decided that I would follow the footsteps of my father and my grandfather into radio broadcasting and show business. But as you said at the start of the show, is about the age of nine, I developed a stutter. Where it came from, I don't know. But all I can say is, as a nine-year-old, it was pretty bloody difficult. And I can, I you know, put myself in the shoes of any other person with a speech impediment. As a growing young boy, it wasn't a good place to be. And I remember my mother saying to me, John, maybe this idea of becoming a presenter, being a radio personality is not going to be your thing. But I was determined. And I remember teaming up age 10 uh, with a lady called Carol, who kind of introduced me to theater and introduced me to stagecraft and voice and projection and that led me down the pathway of doing countless theater performances from age 10 
right through until age 29 when I kind of left that, uh, left that theatre space. But also during that time, lots of speech and drama. So Trinity College London, which is a, a, an exam based where you do different levels and you learn about okay. mon monothongs and diphthongs and triphthongs and neutral vowels and all of that stuff. And after about nine years, I didn't have a stutter. So then I started my first job in radio in Christchurch at a station called 91ZM, or ZM as, as it's called now. And, uh, you know, my first song that I played on the radio was Another Day in Paradise by Phil Collins. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Another, another, very, very, very long intro. And, you know, I think, you know, I think back to those, and then I obviously went on to work at radio for, you know, sort of 10 years. And, you know, you learn a few things or two. So really that kind of defines my why of, of people don't need to have a stutter to front up, put themselves out there, video speaking, etc. We just got to realize there is a process to follow and there are some things that you need to do to improve how you present yourself. Right. And, you know, um, that's some of those things we can talk about today. But, you know, um, I, I really just want to give you your first episode of of the podcast you know you you you've you've certainly learned from your journey from oh. episode one to episode 112 right oh it, it, that's the interesting thing about like when i started this journey is uh i actually started it with tom uh I, one day i called him up and said what are you doing he's like well i'm just hanging out at my in-laws i'm like great you want to help me practice doing this live thing he's like cool let's do it and off we went and we just started kind of winging it not knowing where it was gonna go you know the, the, for me i always thought when i look back on it is like the one thing that drove me in even to episode 112 is like what if i just put in one little piece of improvement every time what if i was open to learning about how i could be better like watching myself sometimes that that's a hard place <laughs> even today it's still hard to go back and watch watch myself but like the things that i've learned from it have really improved what my original goal was was to be able to hold conversations practice asking good questions as somebody who was training to be a coach at the time i'm like well, what's an opportunity to like i love conversating we were in the middle of the pandemic and i was just like it's time to keep on practicing doing this stuff and the live cast gave me all these opportunities to practice slow down and <laughs> yes there's hardware things like a better camera and a better mic and helps awesome. and, and a light like they're not expensive but like the real improvements always come from within and i think that's the thing that you're kind of speaking to here and hopefully you know that's what i what i'm gonna gonna go out on the ledge here and assume that's part of your process of helping these business owners when it comes time to stand in front of it going there's a process to learning so care to share a little bit of sure, around that. sure so you know look i mean you know the, the, there is a there is a step-by-step -step guide you know people that will use we use video as the as the example and the video recorded uh, unlike this is a live show so we'll put the live over there because it's a it's a, often a step too far for people who want to start doing video of themselves yeah. and you know it's the the the, the kind of the People say to me, oh, I want to do some video. I need to get the camera. I was like, no, 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 no. Just put the camera. That's step three. Step number <laughs> one, step number one is your script or mm. what's going to come out of your mouth. Who who are you talking to? That, that, that's right. probably even before the script. You want to, who are you talking to? Who is your audience? Right. So that, you know, from the very early days of, uh, you know, speaker training or theater is how are we communicating that our message to the audience what do we want our audience to think feel or do and it's a it's a cliched outcome but if you can if you can have an answer for the think or the feel or the do or all three then your objective is achieved you know it is about um a journey you want to take your audience on so really that's the first, you know understanding your audience then it's okay well what are we going to say because right. typically most people when they do a video 
is they often don't know how to start. They especially don't know how to end. Oof. And they tend to put more into the script than they need to. They say too much. So when I was in my broadcasting days, one of those things that the, the, the people, the, 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 the older, mature, veteran broadcasters would pass down to you is, yes, you, I was you know, doing music stations, so you, know, you would get maybe six voice breaks an hour you know the top right. of the hour would be the weather and there, there's probably going to be the first break between the first and second song that might be a back sell or a pre-sell then there might be so 20 past there's an opportunity to say you know tell it tell a short story and then you're you know you're there's things you need to do in the hour but there's kind of two two places where you might have a little bit of uh announcer personality and most people don't plan what they're going to say Right, mm -hmm. but the, so so here we are, thinking we need to do our preparation before we we go and do a four hour day shift or whatever it might be. We need to plan out what we're going to be saying in those personality pe um, places. But if you didn't have anything to say, or if there wasn't anything going on, like it wasn't Father's Day, or it wasn't you know, if it wasn't relevant to your audience, the best advice is to say nothing. Hmm. Less is more in the majority of cases. And often they would say, you know, just, you know, back, back sell the song that was Phil Collins and Another Day in Paradise. You're on, you're being with you in this show. Here is one of my favorite songs from Whitney Houston, right? Right. You, you, you know, you don't need to dive into, the, into, into, into a story that you've not rehearsed if you don't know how to get out and link that story or have the relevance to the next song, right? So right. it's there's a little bit of thinking that you need to do, and that's called preparation, which is, from a video context, people don't tend to prepare, right? I mean, we know that our live stream today is a conversation, and uh, I said to you at the start, I hope there's no questions. And well, well there, there will be, but that's what an authentic conversation is. It's not pre-planned, right. it's in the moment, which I, I, I fully support. But coming back to pre-recorded video, you need to plan out what you're gonna say. And uh, you know that's, that's where I help people is mapping out your script so your audience understands the point of your video. Um, so, and then it's kind of, well, you need to rehearse it. You know, I put my hand up, do, do, do you have, do you, do you have B and I like Business Networking International? We, yeah, we do have like B and I and other like uh, groups like that here in yeah. in Canada. So I've so. I've I've been in my chapter for five years, and tomorrow morning I'm I put my hand up to be a president. And we're the oh, we're the congratulations. We're the, thank you. It's a, you know we're the largest chapter in New Zealand, and even I'm nervous because I want to do well, hmm. and I know that there is an opening address of three minutes, so I'm going to tell a story. Have I rehearsed that story? Yes. Yeah. How many times have I rehearsed the story? Oh, about 20 times. Have I said the words out loud uh, in my living room and in the venue? Yes. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, getting comfortable with the environment, getting comfortable with the words which are coming out my mouth. And then when you get to performance tomorrow morning at, you know, 7.02, it'll be better than if I did nothing at all. Right. I think there, there's so much there to... to, I, I, to dive, I'm conscious I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna stop because otherwise I'll just I'll just keep <laughs> on going. Well, and, and you're, you're deploying a lot of value. Like, one of the things that you pointed to er, uh, up front of all that is an interesting thing that, at least for me, caught... Well, being prepared, to, we'll dive into that. But the, the not knowing how to end... <laughs> and I, you know, in, in my, in with coaching, sometimes it's people being afraid to get started, but it's like, okay, well, once you get started and then they're like, almost, I would assume kind of like feel trapped. I, I've been on those videos. I've done, done the things going, oh crap. I have so many like videos of, uh, like cutting room floor of going, I don't know how I'm going to end this and pff, go again, but like not knowing how to end it, I guess that could feel 
pretty intimidating, even potentially even more so than knowing how to end it or start it, I mean. Look, I mean, it, it takes something to start, you know, but it, it takes something to start speaking, to stand up, to, to share your voice. And once you're up, because people haven't done the preparation and they haven't done the rehearsal, they have no sense of timing. Mm. Now, and this is the other little bit of mm, structural element is if you're doing videos of yourself for your business on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, etc. If you're doing them to attract people that you don't know, right? You, you know, that you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're prospecting, you're delivering some value. You need to be mindful of the audience's time. Again, understanding the audience. So I've always said, well, you know, how, how much time does your audience have to listen to you and your point that you want to say? And I w I've always said, you know, training, do, doing, do, doing video training for the last four years is 60 to 90 seconds on LinkedIn, Facebook, obviously Instagram, you, you kind of, right. it's sort of sitting in that 60. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and even, even now it's even shorter. If you, if you, if you can't say what you need to say in 60 seconds, then it could just be a scroll, right? right. People are going to scroll past your, um, your video. So if it's, if it's four minutes long and has no captions, the likelihood of the the audience that you want to see it, which is the people that don't know you, yeah, uh, and you know, and if there's a call to action, which hopefully there is inside of a video, uh, that you know, that's typically at the end, right? It's like right. you know, if you find that uh, helpful or whatever the question is. So, yeah, the 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 challenge is the preparation, the rehearsal. And once you and you know, I always I always say to people, how are you going to start the video? What are your first words? What's going to come out of your mouth? And I'm I'm especially I'm a, I'm a fan of giving them a structure to work within. So, one of my I'll give away trade secret is one of the one of the methodologies that I use for video training, particularly educational content, is I say do it inside of a series. You know, do do a series of videos right. that um that you know around a particular topic or subject uh and in the first three seconds we know you're doing videos the first three seconds is the most important so i kind of say welcome to the name of the series today we're going to be talking about the problem right right it just it gives them words that they can they know how to start and then at the end once you've made your point, thanks for watching the name of the series. We'll see you next time. Right. And it, it just it gives you the words to say, um, you know, uh, to, to obviously top and tail that 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 that, that video. That, that said, you know, some people are quite comfortable talking once they get going. But right. it's you know, having that coach, that little, you know, wind up there, you know, across the, you know, um, behind the camera people get nervous uh, and oh, how do I how do I finish and it's like slow down this yes. is this is a pre-recorded video this yeah. is pre-recorded it's not live you're not standing up to do a speech in front of 50 people you don't you, you know you can stop so I get I, I get I, I find myself getting quite passionate you can stop <laughs> I you can, can see stop it. and look down at your notes and go Oh, that's right. I'm gonna. That's my last word of the last paragraph. Then I'm gonna ask a question, and then I'm gonna finish. Okay. And then you yeah. do three, three, two, one. And, you know, it's it's still yeah. recording, but editors, you can go through and chop out the bits you don't need. So, yeah, starting having one point. Right. It's, this is again one. And if, oh well, I've got I've got three problems that I want to talk about. That's three videos. Yeah. Well, you could even hear in that you could turn that into three series of videos, right? And depending on how you structure it, do you believe in like story brand structure? Is there another story type of structure you're trying to tell that ties back to your brand and messaging? And you can pull that through and basically create a uh, what are they the carousels that we see now on LinkedIn and Instagram? You can basically turn that into your videos. And if you've got a good editor or you're doing this yourself, now all of a sudden you've got like potential multiple carousels. That you're dropping out and turning into pulled out quotes and stuff and 
what I love about that to help people get moving through it is the power of um, what I call spidering content. It's like having one piece that's a long form content or your master that everything else breaks down from. Oh, look, I'm, I'm a big fan of doing this, right? Here we are 20 minutes in and we're doing a live stream and you, you, can, you can then cut this up into little bite-sized pieces. You can do a transcript of it for a blog piece. There's, you know, long form is easier, but it generally yeah. works e easier if there's another person that you're talking to, right? right. So I literally, uh, I used to have a product where it was like a live stream interview where, oh. you know, we would plan out what you're going to say. Yeah. And then I would literally just cut out your frame. So, you know, I, I, I do the, I do the live stream. I'd ask the questions cause it's easier, right? Yeah. Having, having an interview is, is easier than doing, doing a, you know, I need to do a video by myself. So yeah, it's, you know, the, 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 the interview is doing the guiding of where you want to get to that you already, you know, rehearsed it and then editors do magical things even a live stream they just cut out your frame and then would you repackage that as if uh, you know um you're doing a little mini video so yeah, yeah it's there's digital technology is amazing it, it really is i mean video has just made everything so much more or video is just so much more accessible yeah you know i've i've got I've got gray hair and I've got more than you, Gene, more than you. <laughs> I remember when, you know, you want to do a video. Oh, that's $25,000. Yeah. Oh. And, and uh, how with, with this, it this, is. this little yeah. thing, you know, amazing that you can pull that out. And sometimes the, the those uh, raw, authentic videos, they get more engagement. Yeah. Because... Well, the maybe that's a place to like dive into around like the the word authentic too right like i've seen like following gary vaynerchuk and a whole bunch of other people and like there's always those you see the well put together ones and i respect the work that's put into it but like when you catch the one you're like oh that feels like he had an authentic moment and wanted to to do this how do you see that word authentic play out in people being presenting in this format Hundred percent. I have an exercise that I get students or uh, people who are interested to find out: Am I authentic? Ooh. Who am I being on camera? Right? People don't like photos. People certainly don't like video because they don't have to look <laughs> back at themselves and they see all the things that they don't like about themselves. Right. But Jean sees John, and John sees Jean. Right? That's yeah. the truth of it. But John sees. Oh, he's got all that gray hair. Oh, there's gray hair there. Oh, his eyebrow is a little bit lower than the left eye. Oh, for God's sake. It needs to be so, nicer to John. So what we want to ascertain is, is Gene, how would, how, would we, how, how would the authentic Gene be on camera? So I have a little exercise, and I'm happy to share with the listeners later on, is where I get people to go and... I actually go and send this lot, this this list of words to your best friends, to the people that have known you for the longest time. And like we're talking schoolmates. I generally right. try and say try and avoid partners because sometimes there can be bias. Right? <laughs> it's, you know, if you haven't put the, if you haven't taken the rubbish out, yeah. you haven't taken the, have you taken the trash out, then oh, he's he, he, you know. So it's positive words, right. three words that best describe this person. And you send it to five of your best friends that you've known for a while. They send back their results. And you can then compare the notes. Because those people have known you the longest. They know who you are. So if you're worried about am I being authentic, yeah. is ask the people who know you, have known you for the, for the longest time, and they'll tell you. And then I say, be one or two, or if you can do all three of those on camera, then you're going to be authentic. And I know it's a mindset, right? It, it is really, you know, my, my values or my, my authentic personality is I am passionate. It, 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 just, <laughs> it just comes it out. Just, it just comes out. Um, I'm also fun. I mean, I'm like, I've got 24 minutes. So I haven't even told you, told you my jail story. So that's, that's <laughs> we're definitely story. getting to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, 
And, you know, so there's a, there's a fun element. Let's make life fun. And I have this energy and it, it just goes, it follows everywhere I go. So, so long as I'm energetic, passionate and fun when I do videos, then I'm being myself. And if people don't like that, they're not my people. And I was just like, that's, you, you beat me to where we were going next is like, and that works for John. And yeah. that tie that back into the, who are you doing this for? What do you want to make them feel? And what part of the authentic you does that speak to? Because chances are there's a piece of you that you're trying, a past piece of you you're trying to help. And how are you going to speak to that person still being an authentic you and not being a fake you? Because you'd have to ask yourself, would past me see through this if I'm not being real right now? And so for you, you're fun, you're passionate. And, you know, I probably use similar words and getting up, up, up on stage is, is not a problem. But for others, maybe that's not where they land. Maybe they're more analytical and, you know, conscientious and concise or, you know, using different vocabulary, whatever works for whatever is the real you try to like try the real you on. Because I think for oh. so long, so many of us have put these masks on pre being this pretend us is like, mm -hmm. try the work. real you on. It doesn't work, you know, and it's, if you are an, an, an analytical, um, uh, introverted, concise person, then your delivery needs to have elements of those. Yeah. You know, it's just just embrace you. And that's what, you know, the Gary V's of this world is just just be you. Yeah. Don't try and be anybody else. And, you know, because the audience, they can see through it. Yeah. They and can see through it. There's that other, next piece here as well. It's like when you're getting started out, it can be challenging, I think, when you're looking at, I call them vanity metrics, but like impressions and views and stuff like that. Um, but if you're not, if you're not there, get it, you know, it, it's not always about the big numbers, I think. And stepping into this world and being the authentic you, well, what if you've got like 10 views and those 10 people are the exact people you need to talk to? Right. Like that for me is like, how do you start to help people reframe around how they present and being the real you? And then what does it mean about that engagement and what did they accomplish their goal of who are they talking to and how do they make them feel? There's two words that best describe that is purpose. Why are we doing this? Uh, you know, are we posting videos? for vanity metrics or are we posting videos to actually engage with people to deliver again come back to the think feel do am i there to you know typically i'm a business owner i'm delivering yeah. content to build my audience to build my relevance to build my authority and the second one is that well once you start it's about consistency and that word comes into business everywhere. I, we don't need to spend much time on it because I'm sure it's probably cropped up in all 112 episodes. You need to be consistent in having conversations with people in your network to build your content um, inside of your purpose. And I, I, I need to keep guesting on appearance, on guesting on podcasts to share my voice so yeah. I can inspire other people. So, yeah, it's it's. Uh, uh, ha have, ha have a purpose and then the vanity metrics and I should say that I like the vanity metrics because there's an entertainer within me and I know I have fallen into the trap of going oh my god this post is bombing I'm going to I'm going to delete it and it's it's just that's where you like oh what what is the purpose of posting content yeah. oh some will some some posts some video whatever it is some will be good and some will be crap and you learn from the one that you posted you know, that was all about you probably wasn't the right fit for your audience. Yeah. And, and, and I, 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 I think this ties back to like what we, you, you hit on at the beginning of the show is like using that as your learning opportunity is like, if you, you know, if you feel like something's bombed is like, well, take a look at it and contrast it against the ones that worked good. And if you are just starting out, then go look at John's or go look at somebody else's and use, you know, the, there are, there's opportunities to have mentors to contrast against. But, and I use that word contrast 
on purpose is like it doesn't mean that you need to go set it to to right. john's bar or to gary's bar or to somebody else's bar it's just like okay uh this didn't land is there something that i can learn from like my mentors that are out there doing the things oh like you know is it you know is it is it fancy captions oh and actually when talking just about me i might make oh i wasn't making this video for me i was making this video for them to do x y and z to feel and do these things oh i missed the mark cool i can learn and i can re re recalibrate you know look I, I think i from about 2018 i took a bit of a break in 2021 i would have done three videos a week on linkedin and uh some were good some were pretty crap and some were magical and the magical ones was where i talked about a personal experience generally vulnerable hmm. that had relevance to other people right and this is where it's we talk about your authentic authenticity as it relates to business and just in that context is people think i need to post business only video content to demonstrate my authority expertise yada yada but actually yeah. no you don't people do business with people so we must we must share something of ourselves and that's why you know, i just i i seeded it right which you know i went to jail in america and the moral of the story and just to I, I will come back to it but the moral of the story is um i was my authentic self in jail i i didn't put on a mask of going i should be straight john i should be this masculine man i was myself and which can be a little bit gay sometimes and yeah. and the and, and the and the other moral is that the people that i invested at school when i was 11 and uh that was 30 40 years ago is those same people who i was authentic with then bailed me out of jail you know paid for everything you know right. yeah i'm still paying them back is uh, authenticity says a lot about who right. we are in different situations and situations and i uh, don't get me wrong i was uh, i was scared but uh if you honor your true self uh you'll shine in any situation right oh again an another mic drop moment here from you and mm. I, and i think that is like such a grand place to be it, it, to, to land on that um, as a man who tells stories, what has that been like? Has that always been the case? And how did you learn to to understand and accept that point? Oh, well, here's another mic drop moment. And this probably comes from this is um, I think through my 20s, I liked the idea of entertaining, right? If you think about broadcaster, you're an entertainer, actor, you're an entertainer uh as a, and i you know stage performer uh you're an you're entertaining an audience so right. you are there for your purpose is to uh um uh, g give them something as a as opposed when you're working in a business where it's a bit more it's about the business and the client's outcome rather than rather than you being central to that um is when i uh, when I moved, I moved from Auckland to Sydney when I was 29, and uh, uh, two years later, I was I was diagnosed with HIV, and it was, it was it kind of had a huge impact on me from my 30s because I probably pro because I grew up in the 80s, and we know if you you know remember AIDS commercials in the 80s, yeah. I was you're going to die, right? So is there was this kind of desire well there was this thing in my, in my 30s well i might as well just live for the now i might mm. as well just be the be 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 my best self for the day because i know that i'm going to die so that's that's kind of part of the, the 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 challenge but what it did it really taught me to to just it, it doesn't matter about tomorrow just be your best self today Oof. in 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 that in that context of well there might not be a tomorrow because i've got hiv and i know that the past experience i have of people with hiv and aids they die right so 
uh, that's probably where the vulnerability or access to vulnerability came from. Uh, and it's, it's been something that I'm quite comfortable sharing. I, I really, I, I realized, and I did a whole bunch of, uh, you know, you've probably heard of landmark education and, and that, that yeah. deep, deep diving into our psyche of what, what makes us work. I know you're a life coach, so you, you, you'd certainly appreciate I love that. I love, I want to say, I love that shit. It is so good because yeah. you get to look at yourself. And I found myself, you know, telling vulnerable stories, uh, being connected with these other people in these conversations and finding it re remarkably connecting. Yeah. So it was, you know, I talk about superpowers in your, in your, in your, in your content. If you can, if you can do humor, do humor. If you can do opinion, do that. If you can do vulnerable, do that because it'll connect you with your audience faster than just doing i'm going to be in my in my lane right i mean if you know if, if if you're not a vulnerable character then 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 you know we go back to our previous right. conversation of don't don't put the mask on it's not about yeah. it's not being a theatrical performer here it's Ooh. about being an authentic you so yeah it's um there's there's a uh, uh there's an access that I've found it easier to have vulnerable conversations because I know I can connect with someone on a deeper level. Right. Um, and if I can apply that to video content too, or written content, then it's a win-win. And you know what I, I hear from this as well, John, is like, it, what it is, well, it, this isn't about selling then. This is like business is at the speed of relationship. And by you being vulnerable and being the full authentic you, when somebody sees that first 60, 90 second video or maybe follows a few more and then eventually decides, I'm going to join one of his courses and meets him. Like there's already been built up a relationship going, I, I kind of know and experience John because this is what I, and I, and that resonates for me. Sure. And look, that, that's the thing. I think, you know, there's a, there is generally a next step is you need to deliver or demonstrate that you can solve the problem that the person yeah. has but from a from an outset of building connection building building relationships with people just to like you know your gene i'm john i know who you are john and i love what you stand for right it's it's those kind of that's what i'm listening for right. is when people used to you know stop me in the street and they say i really love those silly videos that you did during lockdown they brought a smile to my face right yeah. and I, I even feel emotional now going good because that's what that's what I needed, and I'm sure other people needed that as well. So, yeah, is um, uh, if if you've got it, give it give it your all. Oh my God, I'm getting emotional. Oh God, <sighs> it's the power of a great conversation. That and is being power of a great conversation. It. Absolutely, absolutely. But it... um, three three quick three quick funnies about my jail thing. Oh, obviously, right. Right, yes. Yes, yes, I had drugs, and yes, I spent six days wearing orange in a county jail in Tennessee. Uh, that's a, the, the uh, 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 what was it? Um, Franklin County. And uh, my favorite um, Franklin County thing was uh, that you know there's a booking in process. You know they they book you in, and and, and I, before I got into my into my orange jumpsuit, so gorgeous. <laughs> and they and the and the and the lady behind the behind the the, the desk says name of John last name Maybury social security number oh we don't have social security numbers in New Zealand how do you tell people apart I said we have names <laughs> yeah she, 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 she didn't like that one and uh, and you know there was it was um, it was quite a cathartic six days. And, you know, I'm an educated man. I took down plenty of notes. I went, oh, my God, this is amazing. There's a book or a play or something in this. And maybe yeah. there will be. But uh, I had a money can't buy experience that I paid for. <laughs> um, but uh, as I said at, at, at the start, the moral is that I was my authentic self. So that, to that, that totally ties into uh, our conversation today. Right. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, I could only imagine, and I look forward to the story and or book when that comes out. Well, it, it, I think it is already on YouTube, but it is, I have done a, I've been on a podcast, 
but that podcast doesn't exist anymore. But I did keep a recording. So if you are listening to this and you'd like to have an hour and a half of a, of, a, of hilarious, it is quite quite hilarious, uh, the, the entire story, uh, then uh, reach out to Jane and we can I can share those details. We'll definitely make that connection. Well, John, you know how at the top of the show, I said we're going to look up and realize we're at our, our time marker because our time's flying by so quickly. And we're already there and a little bit over. So I do want to be respectful of your time today. This has been, this 40 minutes has flown by just like I knew it would. So thank you so much for being on the show. Before we get going into our last question here today, I want to give you an opportunity to like give a little shout out for who you are and how the audience can get connected with you. And this is it's time not to be humble. It's like, let, let's hear about the great things that you're doing for. Oh, you're Lord, doing for. it's hard to be humble. <laughs> when you're perfect in every way yeah i wonder i i'm not i'm not a big singer but if there's an opportunity to entertain uh, they'll always be there but i oh, look i'm a i'm a presentation coach and i help people do video help them map out their their story and uh, you can find me on linkedin you know there's a linkedin down below there's only i'm a i think i'm a john maybury jr no no i am a, i'm a john maybury ah oh, whatever i'm there and yeah. It, the, the, it, it, it looks like that picture. Let's just have a conversation, right? Let me work out what, you know, p people come to me and say they think they know what they want and then I tell them what they need. Oh, I love that way, that, how you just ended that. Anyways, for those down, the all those links are down below as well and the you'll see in the, uh, in the show lower thirds. It's all there. Definitely connect with John and uh, let him help you find out what you actually need when it comes to video. So, John, I have one last question, and then we will let you get on your way, sir. So, what is your personal definition of trusting yourself? I think we've already been talking about it for the last 40 minutes. I think we have, too. I think, kind I of think this, it's, I think it's right been there. Bled it's, a little bit today. It has been bled, and it starts with A and ends in C, and it's got power between the A and the C. Oh, wow, that was a magical, John. Oh. Just, just, just be your authentic self, and everything will look after itself. Mm. Thank you so much, my friend. All right, thank you again, John, and to everybody else. Thank you for watching. This has been episode one hundred and twelve, and we will see you next Wednesday. Thank you.